plugin of the year. This is the plugin of the year, ladies and gentlemen. This is absolutely the king of all releases of this year. This plugin right here. You see this right here? You see this right here? That means you can have your cake and eat it too. That means we can have Pro R 2 with all its goodness and in Dolby Atmos without having to pay an extra fee or an extra license or an extra, you know, uh, Atmos version. This is included inside Pro R2. This is going to democratize the, the ability of users to make music with Atmos, of people to understand the complexities of Atmos and settle them down. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to open up the doors for a lot of users who were scared of doing and uh, starting to process their music, their mixes with Atmos. So I'm really, really happy about this release. It's the best release of the year. All right. We still have two more months to go, but it's game, set, match. This is, this is it. If Pro Fair Filter Twin 3 was already amazing, this Pro R2 just takes the cake. It's the best reverb there is, and it's the best surround sound reverb with the most ease of use capabilities. It has all your, you know, typical fat filter cue things integrated into a reverb. So this thing is amazing. All right, let's take a listen to it. And let's make my head small. Let's make the top super long. Let's make it 10 seconds long. This plugin is just incredible. Let's go ahead and go through some of these uh, other presets. Let's go to small church. Holy moly. Holy moly. We just controlled so many parameters with just these sliders right here. They're controlling these main parameters up here and the relationship between all these different bands. And we're able to control these surround settings at almost like a macro view. This is simply incredible. Um, yeah, I'm without words. I was going to start off the demo with a typical vocal and going through your pre-delay, your character, your thickness, your ambiance, or distance setting, your space setting, 
your brightness and whatnot. However, uh, I'm just so impressed with the Dolby Atmos um, integration that it's, I'm going to start off with that just to show you guys how easy it is to use. So here I'm in QAs. This will also work inside Pro Tools. Uh, I believe Ableton uses Atmos now. And FL Studio has integration via uh, the renderer. So if you get the renderer, you can uh, integrate uh, FL Studio to send the outs into the renderer. And yeah, you have many DWs, DWs that support Atmos now. So let me show you quickly. I think Logic does as well. I'm not too sure, but I think Logic does. And that's, you know, everyone on the Mac uses Logic. Everyone on PC starts with FL. So that's great for everyone. Now, loading up Pro R in Amos is super easy. You just load it up as if you were loading up Pro R2. And kabam. There you go. You're loaded with this wonderful preset. Now, this alongside Pro Q3 is super killer. Let's go. Let's get Pro Q3 real quick, quickly. Let's bring down a little bit of my high end here. Okay. Now check this out. I can control the bands globally, right? But I can also left click and add specific channel control for, for example, the center. So if I want to deduct the level of the reverb from a center channel, I can go ahead and do so. And if I want to boost it, tuck it down, move it, I can go ahead and do so. It's, it's amazing. Uh, I can even focus on like specific frequencies and duck them out. So if there's a little ringing here and there from, let's say, you have a a percussion that's ringing on the left hand side you can duck it a little bit actually we can we can do this here quickly with um my drums let's see i have some drums here and it's a little ringy so let's go ahead and, and um Make a, a little uh, group for this. Press T. I'm gonna add a standard bed or 7.1.2 configuration into my standard bed. I'm gonna call this drum from verb. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll come to my reverb or to my drum, sorry, and I'll change the drum room. I'll take it off from there and I'll send part of the signal into the drum verb now instead. Okay. And in there, I'll add the pro R. There you go, pro R2. And like I said, we can see that imbalance in the level on the left channel, right? So what I'll do is I'll go to my EQ, and I'll set this to be on my left channel, left, right, front, or I could do left. And that controls all the left channels that I have, which include the left uh, front, left side ch channel, left side uh, rear, and the left uh, surround. So all of them and the ones up top, if we do have uh, that ability. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change this to left, right, front, 
or left, right, center. And in this case, let's just do left, right, front. All right. You hear how that little ringing is a little bit annoying? It's stuck it down. And if I wanted that reverb to decay quicker in the top end compared to the low end, I can just come to my decay rate EQ, which is a control of the percentage of the space knob right here, which is your decay. And if you bring it down here, you're going to start reducing it. If you bring it up, you're going to start increasing the decay on a per band basis. That's simply fantastic. Let's go ahead and let's listen to the mid range. So let's say I want to get rid of a little bit of mud. I can go ahead and reduce that decay on the the middle frequencies in my reverb and clean up a lot of my track. That tightened it up quite a bit. Let's move over to a different part of the song. Getting tired of that first part. So it's that easy to use it for R in Dolby Atmos. It's just as easy, to, as easy as when we're using it in stereo format. So I really love this about it. Um, I know a lot of other uh, you, uh, reviewers are going to start off with the with the standard stuff, but I wanted to start off with Dolby Atmos because I just wanted to share that with you um, and how easy it is to use and how applicable it is to just simple instruments like this. Um, and now you can. Use the information and go around and apply to different stuff that's a lot crazier, like vocal choirs, like moving automations and whatnot. You can literally move the reverb around as well. It's amazing. And again, you could do this on your um, on using the surround settings here, the global settings, and you can automate these. So these. Is, are just fantastic. Now, I'm probably going to do a video that's even more in depth, probably maybe an hour long, just on this um, stuff in Pro R. But today, I want to talk about things in general um, about Dolby Amos, about loading impulse responses, because I haven't even gone that, to that part yet, which is awesome. Um, actually, let's do that right now. Um, before we get into the the gate stuff, the ducking and all that, which is really, really cool. Let me talk about the impulse responses. So the impulse responses are applied in a way like no other convolution reverb has done it, at least in my experience. You can literally just grab and import an impulse response. Let's say um, here I have impulse responses that I'm making 
um, compatible with Pro R2 because I've recorded tons and tons of reverb from different different synthesizers, different effects units, different rooms I've been in. I go ahead and just clap or hit like two little bricks together or cylinder blocks or whatever uh, or wood sticks and I hit them together and I start to collect impulse responses and I've done I've been doing this for years. And I've done the same thing with my synthesizers. I've recorded input responses of some of my favorite synthesizers, as you can see here. Uh, these are called Viral. Um, and these are based on a very famous uh, German synthesizer that has a really cool detuned saw wave uh, oscillator. And then over here I have a Walrus, which is a, a synthesizer that's very famous as well. Starts with a W. Um, and they, they have really cool reverb as, as well. Very distinct from the one of the viral synth. Um, this one's a lot colder, in my opinion, and the viral one it's a bit warmer. But let's go ahead and open up one of these. Let's open up a synth intenser, impulse response. And as you can see there, Pro R analyzed the impulse response and said, hey, right here around uh, 14K, we had a dip or a cutoff. And then here I have a dip. And my high end is a little bit brighter. It's the case of a little bit. Uh, how do you say, um, less quickly than the low end. Let's go ahead and try another impulse response. Let's do, let's see. What do you got here? Synthesize reality. Boom. Now this is very different. Uh, let's hear on the drums. Yes. So it sounds very different. Uh, maybe it's not the best for drums right there because we want something that's a little bit brighter but and shorter as well. But we can see here how Pro R grabbed all the filters from my synthesizer or from the reverb inside my synthesizer and applied them. You can see here how it, it created a huge dip right here with different bands. Um, and here's some peaks here. And then there's some... Uh, low end roll off, but then there is, you know, enhancement in the decay rate of the mid range and also some ringing over here, probably from due to some aliasing that the synthesizer has. I'm not sure, but there you have it. It's it's amazing that we can load up impulse responses here and the red by Pro R. And now we're able to change a lot of these parameters. Let's check this out. Having the ability to do this is so crazy. Let's go ahead and open up another impulse response. Um, let's see. Let's go on resonating cab. Ah, this is dangerous. Let's bring this down a bit. Now this is actually impulse response I recorded through a distortion unit. I'm not going to tell you which one, but it's, it's going to create a very distinct sound. So I've created all these crazy different responses. Let's go ahead and let's open up some of the presets that I've already made here. Let's look at uh, Rumble Crumble, which is a super mega boosted low end. It's a, a reverb, which is crazy. Let's throw, let's throw the kick drum inside of the the reverb here. Q sends or sends. Let's add it to the drum verb channel. There we go.
this is just so good that, that I'm able to, you know, grab anything and just turn into a reverb. Let's go to, to my synth verbs, verbs from my synthesizers. Let's go ahead and open up uh, this one. This one sounds all ghosty. So, yeah, you were able to load these impulse responses as you as I'll show you right now. Let me open up an IR that's based on that, as you can, so you can see that I'm not fooling you guys. Let's go here to where is it? Uh, synth impulses. So here we have the let's see. Ghost, 101 Ghost. And there you go. The same as the preset. So as you can see there, this was for, taken from a synthesizer. And now I saved it into Pro R2. So what I've done is I'm going to probably show you guys really quickly here. I have a website of my own. So here's my website. It's kevinochoa.com. And here I have some free virus reverb response uh impulse responses and you can download these these are free i'm probably going to make another free pack uh for this pro r2 release with a few different things like the some of these ones but that are modified and some other impulse responses and then by the end of the week i'll probably have a more scoped out version that has the presets that are a bit more polished and i'll put those up for sale but for now you guys will be able to enjoy some of the free impulse responses um on my website so make sure you guys download that it's they're gonna be pretty fun for you for you guys to use and i'll upload like 15 of them 20 of them and then if you guys feel like uh pitching in and help me helping me out a little bit i'll uh release a full pack later okay so let me close this down let's go back to pro r so like i said I was going to do the basic um, intro talk with uh, like, you know, talking about the vocals, uh, but no, I decided to talk about the um, Dolby Atmos first. Now let's go back into talking about um, vocals. So let's go ahead and stop the recording and then I'll hop over to FL, pull up some vocals and show you guys some of the updated features and some of the new algorithms that we have inside Pro R. All right, let's go over to the other updates Pro R has, which are adding modern, vintage, and a plate reverb. So keep in mind that we can also use this in Amos. It's the first reverb to have plate in all Amos channels. It's really cool. The next thing that we do have is an auto gate feature, ducking, which are simply fantastic. Now, let's go and listen to them one by one. So we got. Um, these vocals here. Let's turn off uh, Pro R2 for a second. Seeing the stars reminds me of you. Oh, 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 hey. You left me with scars, but I know that one day you'll see it through. You'll see it through. You'll see it through. Hey. You'll see it through. See it, see it through. And it just simply sounds amazing. Um, this is the default setting with a little bit of ducking. And that's it. That's all I really did to it. Um, yeah, it's that easy to use. Okay, <laughs> let me show you um, some more stuff here. So let's go back to modern. And what I'll do is I'll pick Vintage and Play After, but I'll have the mix at 100% so you can listen to the different algorithms. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete all these filters, cut them off, and then I'll set this to a second long. And 
I'll set the mix again to 100% and we're going to go between them, okay? Let's, for a second though, listen back to the original vocal. Seeing the stars reminds me of you. Oh, 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 hey. You left me with scars, but I know that one day you'll see it through. Okay, let's now activate Pro R and let's start off the modern. They just sound so, so good. And they're very different, as you can tell. The modern sounds very transparent, I would say. The most transparent out of all the three versions. And the vintage one sounds definitely like a reverb from the 80s, in my opinion. And then the plate sounds metally. I really like it. See you Sounds so good. Just mix a, a bit of that in. Seeing the stars reminds me of you. Oh, 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 hey. You left me with scars, but I know that one day you see it through. You can even use this as a vocal double. Turn on auto gate. And it sounds so nice and saturated right there. Let's pull this back a little bit, lower the character, and I'll extend the gate a little bit. See the stars reminds me of you. Oh, 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 hey. You left me with scars, but I know that one day you'll see it through. All right, let's turn off the auto gate. And what we'll do is uh, add a vintage one. We're going to push this up higher, and we're going to test out the ducking. Seeing the stars reminds me of you. Oh, 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 hey. You left me with scars, but I know that one day you'll see it through. Very, very cool. Let's pump the mix up to 100%, and we can very easily hear this. Really, really cool. Um, if we push the talking all the way up, it's at 48 dp, which is so much. There's some gonna be some instances where you do need this, but most of the time you can be comfortable with a bit less. I really, really enjoy that. Pair that up with some pre-delay. Let's uh, set it to, let's say, quarter note. And then let's put the mix in a bit. Seeing the stars reminds me of you. Oh, 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 hey. You left me with scars, but I know that one day you'll see it through. Let's set it to be shorter, around 16th note. Seeing the stars reminds me of you. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, you left me with scars, but I know that one day you'll see it through. One, uh, I mean, one out of 32. Seeing the stars reminds me of you. Oh, 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 hey, you left me with scars, but I know that one day you'll see it through.
really really nice let's go back to modern and let's put it 100 percent That sounds so so lovely so this is what it sounds like on vocals um super easy to use um we haven't even looked at the filtering yet but from there you can see that we have the three new algorithms the auto gate feature is quite good i'm gonna go a little bit more in deep into it then we have ducking which works spectacularly well as well okay let's hop over to some drums i try to make a a dubstep glitchy vocal chop thing but didn't work out so we're just gonna stick with the drums which sound pretty nice there we go so we have our drum room which contains a lot of these drums not all of them though Okay, and we also have a gated snare here. And it's like that Jack U snare where you have the little click and then the actual body of the snare. Now, let me put up here, have it. You can see I have the auto gate turned on, which is really, really important for this type of snare. As you can hear, the reverb sounds absolutely massive on that snare. But using that gate, we can trim it down and make sure that it plays only when we need it and it gives space for the other instrumentation now the gate has can be set in uh, milliseconds And this is programmed so, so well that we don't have any, any of these clicks and any of these um, weird artifacts that you often find in gated, reverbed, or delayed um, effects. And these guys from FatFilter, these developers, are the best at doing this type of implementation. They did it with the attack and um, attack time and decay time within uh, ProQ 3's. Um, uh, dynamic EQ it sounds very very good out of the box this is the same way you're not going to have to fuzz around too much with it set it to let's say we have 128 um, you know uh, beats per second so you can do the math let's put up a calculator let's see we got 60 seconds let's divide that by 128 we got 40, 468 milliseconds. Let's divide it by four. And let's go ahead and set that to 117. And we should be good to go. Okay. Okay, so there you go. That's how you use the auto gate. 
Um, what else do we have here? Let's go to the drone room. Now, like I said earlier, we can import a lot of these impulse responses. Let's import one from, let's see, a small bar here, from the 101. make some space for the base to come in so I'm gonna just simply left click and drag to put my frequencies and then I can use the frequency um, graph right here spectrum analyzer And I can focus on that one instrument out of all my drums and make it sound like it's further back by increasing the decay time. It's so, so good. I can do the opposite as well, which is make it sound like it's closer. simply by ducking it down. Is that amazing? <laughs> it's, it's simply such a cool tool. Like when I started making music, I wish we could have had something like this where we could even apply this on a master channel and we could clean up and boost certain frequencies or certain reverbs um, and create certain spaces. Um, I'm pretty sure we could also, if we wanted to really, really get crazy about it okay let's go ahead and do that let's get crazy with it let's take it one step further so let's pretend we have our track right here and it's a two track now and let's pretend we don't have this big reverb in here let's pretend we just have this Now, everything's pretty pretty okay. Uh, I do wish, however, if let's pretend that I have, this was a stereo track that I received and I have to master it. Let's pretend that I wanted to add a little bit of reverb on the little talk, on the little, little ping. A little pop. So let's say I wanted to add reverb to that. With Pro R2, I can. Let's load up Pro R2. And let's set this to basic, so it's all clean. If we turn on, of course, it's going to reverb everything. However, like I said, we want to focus on the peep, on the little peep sound. So I'm going to go ahead and find it here. So I'm going to grab that band right there. I'm going to move it right there. I'm going to grab another band, move it slightly to the right of it. And now I'm going to set that first band to be a low cut. And the second band to be a high cut. Oh, sorry. Let me go back. Let's set it to be a high cut. So there we go. So now we're getting there. We're getting a little bit more detailed. Let's go ahead and put this at 48 and we'll do 40 on both sides. And let's go ahead and boost my decay right here.
How spectacular is that? We managed to pull out one instrument out of everything and reverb just that small sliver of our spectrum. Simply amazing. Now, what if I had the audio gate turned on? makes a good difference. Why? Because now, once the drums stop, boom, that stops. Now, another cool thing, again, with the ducking. It really makes it seem like I was inside of the mix and I applied section compression to the, just that reverb send out from that, uh, that percussive hit into the reverb and I'm able to duck it and control it. So I, as a mastering engineer, have control over this. Small little details that go a long way thanks to Pro R2. I could do the same thing with the hi-hats. Let's say I want to add a little bit of reverb to the hi-hats. Let me briefly show you again without this. With it. So subtle, but in the mix, it's so, so good. Let's go ahead and try adding the Pro R2 to enhance the, the high-end percussion, the hi-hats. Let's go ahead and, first of all, go back to basic. And it's that simple to get super intricate with your reverb with Pro R2. Now you can go ahead and mess around with the distance. And as simple as that, I have drums that are a bit more lively, even though they're completely, you know, programmed, they become a little bit more lively with Pro R2. And again, if I'm in a mastering situation and I really want to add a little bit of reverb, Pro R2 is your plugin to go to. Yeah, I just can't rate this plugin highly enough. It's simply amazing. Um, for the features it already had, um, even if you didn't have the that integrate Dolby Apple support, I think it's a worthy update. Now, 
with Adobe Atmos support that it has, it's game set match, like I said. It's the best plugin of the year. It's the best release. It's, um, again, it's going to bring a de democratic movement, just like Pro Q3 did, of high quality audio tools, in this case, reverb, to the masses. So no longer are you going to have this mystified Dolby Atmos uh, reverb plugin. Now you have Pro R2 that shows you clearly with every band that, hey, well, this is my left, this is my right channel, this is my left surround, this is my right surround. You can push that one up or bring it down low. You can filter that sound out. Um, you can tilt things back and forth a little bit or a lot if you want to. Um, you can change across, talk with them, the cross modulation, sorry. And it's so, so, so good. Okay, I'm going to leave this video at that. I hope you enjoyed it, that you liked it, that you learned a lot from it. Um, that you can take a lot of these tools and bring them into your own production. And I want to thank you for being here with us at Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa. And make sure you comment on your favorite feature that Pro R2 has. And let us know uh, what other type of content you want to see from us. Um, like I said, I'll probably do a more in-depth video regarding Dolby Atmos with Pro R2. And I'll probably do another video on more impulse responses and show you some of the ones that I created in more detail. Um, again, if you want to check out my website, go ahead and do so. It's www.kevinochoa.com. Um, there's some free impulse responses there. And hopefully by the release date of Pro R2, I'll have a little free pack for you guys so that you guys can load them in here um, and import them, you know, and say, okay, that's pretty crazy. That's a pretty crazy cue, but that's something that it would look like uh, or something that a synthesizer spits out. So as you can see, um, we can not only uh, emulate, we could also enhance and improve upon different sounds. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you guys liked it and stay tuned for the next one. Peace.